Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, America. Today is the second Sabbath of June, uh, the 10th. It is approximately 12.38. We're a little early and that's good. We're going to start off today with another Psalm of Sheer ASAP. It is Psalm 79. Yesterday we did Psalm 70. A, which was a very, very long one. It had 72 glorious verses, and we consumed each and every word of it. Today we have uh, Psalm 78, Lament and Prayer for the Destroyed City of Jerusalem. Lament and Prayer for the Destroyed City of Jerusalem. It has 13 glorious verses. We have black for sin, the first four. We have um, orange for your faith, that's about ten verses, and one verse of red for discipleship, which is the last verse. Let's begin, and I will be reading it from both this, uh, my Bible, and the International Bible, just to be sure that we understand what was said. Verse one, oh God. The heathen are come into thy inheritance, O God. Yes. The heathen are come into thy inheritance, O God. The heathen are come into thy inheritance, thy holy temple have they defiled. They have defiled the Lord's holy temple. Defiled it, Father. Excuse me. O God. The heathen are come into thy inheritance, thy Holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps too. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beast of the earth. Um, for three, their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. This is the horrendous uh, uh um, occurrences that occurred in the Bible to the prophets of the Bible time. This is what they were doing to them. Um, their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Five, we are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a diversion to them that are round about us. And we are, that reproach is even more... Um, monstrosity. This is a monstrosity today. Um, 5 to third, uh, to 12 is orange for your faith. How long, Lord, will thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? 6. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have done, that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. Yes, uh, pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy nation. These kingdoms will now be called nations. Uh, there are nations of people on this earth now that do not call upon the Lord. 7. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Yes, Lord. 8. Oh, remember not against us former inequity. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Yes, we are. 9. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Yes, help us, O God of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sin for thy name's sake. Help us, Father God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. 10. Wherefore shall the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in, their, in our sight by the Revenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. Wherefore shall the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight for the revenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. Wherefore shall the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight, Father God. 
by the avenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. 11. Let the sighting of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Let the sighting of the prisoners prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power preserve thou those that are appointed to die twelve and render unto our neighbors seven foes unto their bosom their reproach wherewith they have repro reproached thee o lord and render unto our neighbors seven foes unto their bosoms their reproach wherewith they have re Approach thee, O Lord, yes, and render unto our neighbors seven foes unto their bosoms their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. 13, the last verse read for discipleship. So we, thy people, and sheep of thy pasture, will give thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. So we, Thy people, your people, God, and the sheep of thy pasture will give thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Okay, let's read it from here. Let's read it from here. This doesn't have colors. It, uh, it only says a psalm of Asaph. One, oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubbish, too. They have given the dead bodies of your servants as food to the birds of the air, and they have... They have given the dead bodies of your servants as food to the birds of the air, the flesh of your saints to the beast of the earth. Three, they have poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. Four, we are objects of reproach to our neighbors, of scorn and diversion to those around us. Five, how long, O oh Lord, how long, O oh Lord, how long, O oh Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Six, pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. Yes, pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. Yes, pour it out, Father. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call all on your name seven for they have defiled jacob and destroyed his homeland yes father they have defiled jacob and destroy your homeland which is the earth do not hold us the sins of the fathers. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Yes, we are. Do not hold against us the sins of the fathers. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Do not hold against us the sins of the fathers. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Nine, help us, O oh God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Help us, O oh God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Help us, Father God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. Help us. Help us. Help us, O oh God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Excuse me. Ten, why should the nation say, where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpour blood of your servants. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpour blood of your servants. Why shall the nation say, where is your God? Before our eyes make known, Father, among the nations that you avenge the outpour blood of your servants. 
11. May the grinds of the prisoners come before you by the strength of your arm. Preserve those condemned to die. May the groan of the prisoners come before you by the strength of your arm. Preserve those condemned to die. 12. Pay back unto the laps of our neighbors seven times the reproach they have heard unto you, O Lord. Yes, pay back unto the laps of our nation seven times the reproach they have heard at you, O Lord. Pay it back unto the laps of our nation seven times the reproach they have heard at at you, O oh Lord, pay it back, pay it back, pay it back unto the laps of our neighbors seven times, seven times, the reproach they have heard at you, O oh Lord, pay it back, pay it back. 13, then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. Yes, we will, Father God, then we, your people. The sheep of your pastor will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praises. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pastor, will praise you forever. 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 From generation to generation, we will recount your praises. Pay it back to this nation. The reproach upon their laps. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. Almost had me in tears. Okay. Yesterday, we were not able to read Hebrews 2. And that is the reading for today. Hebrews 2 says, warning to pay attention. Warning to pay attention. Don't wait until the last second to pay attention. Pay attention. Sheep, flocks of the Lord, pay attention. I'm not talking to the rest of you, atheists. I mean, if you listen to the word of God and change your mind and realize that you have sinned and not acknowledged God, then we are speaking to you. Okay, but for all the rest of you that belong to Satan, maybe we can capture a few of you. Okay, Hebrews 2, neglect of God's salvation, suffering Jesus brought salvation, and why Jesus came as a human being. Why did he come down? Did he waste his time? Did he waste, did he waste his time coming down here? I mean, according to what's going on in this world today, it seems like it was a waste of his time. Did he waste his time? His suffering, was it for nothing? Okay. This verse has 18 verses. It starts off with red for discipleship. It has six verses of black. It is predominantly purple for the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it has a half a verse of brown for 14 and one verse of blue for your salvation. But the rest of this is all purple with the exception of the two verses of black and, and one half verse of of. Um, Brown, one verse for salvation and one verse for discipleship. So let's begin. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Least at any time we should let them slip. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Pay attention to the things that we have heard. Pay attention. That's what to give heed means. To pay attention to that which we have heard. Okay? Least at any time we should let them slip. All right? Two and three are the two black verses we have. And it says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receive a just recompense of reward. Three, how shall we escape if we neglect 
so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Those are the writers of this beautiful book. Okay, they are the ones who heard those words. Unfortunately, we didn't have such a blessing to see the Lord stand before us. We didn't have a blessing to gaze into his eyes. Okay. These writers were able to see him, speak to him, question him. But we, despite the fact that we have not seen him, we believe that he is who he is. We believe that he came here. We believe that he did all that is written of him. We believe that he is our Savior. Okay? Four, all the way to 14 is purple for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. For God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, the gift of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Five, for unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. Six, but one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Seven, thou makest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Amen. Eight, thou hast put all things in subject under his feet. For in that he put all in subject under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under his feet. Nine. But we see Jesus who was made a lower, little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor. That he may by the grace of God shall taste death for every man. For every man. For every man. For the men of the biblical time, for those of us today, for those of us that come after every man, every man. Ten, for it is be become him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captains of their salvation perfect through suffering. Eleven, for both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all of one. We are all one. I'm not talking about the false prophets. They are all together one. The false prophets are all together one. They're all doing the same thing. They are all purging your pockets. And you weep nothing for it. Nothing. Okay? And they give you not the word. That's how you can tell that they are all one. Okay? But those... For it becomes him for whom are all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he, the Lord, the sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. So the true servants of the Lord are all one with him. All one. Okay. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He is not ashamed to call me his sister. Okay. Or his daughter. Twelve. Uh-oh. Here comes uppercase lettering. Pay attention. Saying, I will declare my thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praises unto thee. Those are uppercase lettering. I will repeat it again, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praises unto thee. And again, verse 13, uppercase lettering, pay attention. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. 14. 
For as much as then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Now, this is the brown part of, of verse 14, and brown stands for Satan, that through death he might destroy him that has power of death. Oh, excuse me, Father. Father, that is uh, the devil, that through death he might destroy him that has power of death. That is the devil. Uh, here's 15, the only uh, blue verse. Blue stands for your salvation. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 16 to 18 is again uh, purple for the Trinity. For, ver for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the nature of uh, the seed of Abraham. 16, for virtually he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. 17, wherefore in all things it beloved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. 18, for in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. That is all 18 verses. Let's take it here to this book here. There's no tissue around when I need it. Okay, paying, this one says, warning to pay attention, America, pay attention, never mind, it's two, 2017, never mind what you see going on in this world, never mind all of that, pay attention to these words here, because these words here will save you, okay, pay attention, verse one, we must pay more careful attention. Therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away too. If, for if the message spoken by the angels are, was bonding and every violation and disobedience received is just punishment. Every violation and disobedience will receive is just punishment. And I can see it happening in the land. Yes, we're receiving our just punishment. Okay, three, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was the first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Um, four, God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Five, it is not to angels that he was subject, he subject the world to come about which we are speaking, but there is six, but there is a place where someone has testified. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Seven, you make him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything, everything under his feet. In putting Everything, eight, in putting everything under his feet, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present time, we do not see everything subject to him. We don't. We don't. We don't see that anymore. Okay. This, which, this, is, this is what brings tears to my eyes. Nine, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. So that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. He went, he went through that for all of us. Even for those who acknowledge him not. He suffered for them as well. 10. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists shall make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. 11. Both the ones who make men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brethren. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. 13, and again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children of God. Here 
am I and the children God has given me. 14, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. Uh, 15, the, fee, the free and free those who all lived their lives were held in slavery um, by their fear of death. 16, for surely it is not angels he helped, but Abraham's descendants. Amen. 17, for this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he may make atonement for the sins of the people. 18, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Okay, that is all 18 verses of uh, Hebrews 2. Okay. And Hebrews 1, we're going to go back a little bit. I will read it to you because it only has, it only has, it only has 14 verses. Again, it's predominantly, um, Purple and the and it again it has uh, two verses of blue for your salvation, and it has two verses of gold for prophecy. And the title is God's Son is superior to the angels. He is superior. He is the superior high priest. He is superior to the Pope. He is superior to any of us here. He is superior to any of the prophets in the biblical time. Okay. Um, verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners, back in times past unto the Father by the prophets, too, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his Person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majestic on high, for being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they five. Uh, pay attention because we have some uppercase lettering here. For unto for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be me to me a son. He has never said any of that to any of his angels, only to his only begotten son. And again, verse 6, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. 7, uh, Uppercase lettering, pay attention, it is blue for your salvation. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. That's what we're supposed to be, a flame of fire. We're not supposed to be a pacifier to pacify you. No, sir. We are not here to pacify you. We are not here to make you clap and make you smile. No, no, that is not our job. If you want to be pacified, then go see your pastor. All right? He will pacify you. If you want to be pacified, then go and go to YouTube, get the whole list of false prophets, and any one of them will be more than happy to pacify you. Okay? Here at Spiritual Water, no pacification at all. Seven. And of the angels, he said, no who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. That's what we are. Okay? Eight. Oh, sorry, Father. Eight. But unto the Son he said, Thou throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scripture of righteousness is the scripture of thy kingdom. Nine. Uh, uppercase lettering. Uppercase lettering. From eight to thirteen. Pay attention. He. He. 
9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated inequity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. Yes, everything you see outside here has been made by the God of this earth. Everything. And science cannot reproduce it. None of it. None of it. Okay. Um, 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. 11. They shall perish. Uh, and another thing, America. Let me finish this verse. 11. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as does a garment. 12. And still uppercase lettering. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years should not fail. 13. But to which of the angels said, He at any time sit on my right hand until I have made thy enemies thy foots too? To which of the angels? None. None. Only his son received that. Only his son can sit at his right hand. And even though he is his son, not even his son would know the day that his son returned. Not even his son. He said, only his father knows when I will return. Not even I know. Okay. Uh, 14 is blue for salvation. Are they not all ministering spirits set forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And that is all 14 beautiful verses of chapter 1 of Hebrews pertaining to our precious Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and I'm going to read it from here as well. The Son superior to angels. That's what it says here. The Son superior to the angels. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, too. But in these last days, he spoken to us by his son, through he, the, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. 3. The son is the radiant of God's glory and the exact rep representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he has provided pur purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majestic in heaven. For So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. 5. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become I have become your father, or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. Six, and again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he said, let all God's angels worship him. Seven, in speaking of the angels, he says he makes their, his angels wings, his servants flames of fire. As I said, we are flames of fire. We are not here to pacify you. And we don't need your money. Did you hear that well? We don't need your money. You can give your money to the false prophet, but the true servants of the Lord have no need of your money. Okay? But also, the sons, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. Nine, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Uh, therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. 10. He also says in the beginning, O Lord, you lay the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. Yes, indeed. 11. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. 12. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. Amen. Uh, 13, to which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? 14, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? And that is all 14 beautiful verses of chapter 1 of Hebrews. Okay, 
So I think we got a good understanding of the reading for today. I do have a few little words to go over with you. Danger. What is danger? Risk. Peril. That's what danger is. Risk. Peril. Uh, what is a your cliding? A your cliding. A euro cliding. It is an east wind or violent wind. It is spoken of in Acts 27, 14. When the, when the Lord is ready, we will read that. A your cliding is an east wind or very violent wind. Okay. Um, boldness. What is that? It is courage. It is bravery. It is confidence. That's what boldness, bold, bold, boldness is. It is courage. It is confidence. It is bravery. Boldness. Okay. Uh, where does it come from? Righteousness in Proverbs 28. Read it all for yourself. Boldness, courage, confidence comes from righteousness. Okay. Um, because it is written so in Proverbs 28. Ah, actually, I have it written here. It says, Proverbs 28, the wicked flee when no man persecutes them, pursues them. The wicked, they run when no one is chasing them. Yeah, that's what they do. They run when no one is chasing them. Okay? But the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. So if you're a robber and you happen to make a terrible mistake and rob a household of a righteous individual, you have just met your worst nightmare. Let me repeat that. If you're a robber and you happen to rob a righteous person, you have just met your worst nightmare because the righteous are what? Courageous, brave, and confident. Okay? What happens when you come into a house of a courageous, brave, and confident individual? It's not what you expect. You're not going to walk out of there with anything. If anything, you're going to be carried out. Let me repeat that. When you robbers and thieves break into the house of a righteous individual, you have broken into a house with a person who is courageous, brave, and confident. That you will not walk out of there with anything. You will be carried out. Amen. You will be carried out half dead. Amen. Okay? Because a righteous person... It's not going to behave like a wicked person. A wicked person will run when no one is chasing them. Okay? A righteous person will face their enemy and deal with them accordingly. You hear me? A righteous person will face their enemy and deal with them accordingly. Be it man or woman, it doesn't matter. But to the thief, it will be your worst nightmare. Okay? And here it says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So when you rob a righteous individual, it's like you walking into a house of lions, and you will be treated as such. Okay, now the whole armor of God, loins gird about with what? The belt is truth. The whole armor of God has different pieces to it. The belt itself of the armor is truth. Okay, the breastplate is righteousness. Pay attention. The whole armor of God has different parts to it. The belt is truth, okay? The breastplate that sits here is righteousness, all right? The foot should with the preparation of the gospel of peace, okay? The shield, that is faith, 
all right the belt is truth the breastplate is righteousness the foot shirt, which is the preparation of is the gospel of peace the shield is truth a uh, faith i'm sorry the shield is 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 faith the belt is truth the blessed prey is righteousness. The shield is faith. The helmet is salvation. That's the whole armor. I'm giving you the whole armor. Okay? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Okay? With the whole armor on, you are a righteous individual. And therefore, you are brave, you are courageous, and you are confident and fear nothing but God himself. All right? So if somebody break into your house, remember who you are. Remember who you are. You're a righteous individual. And it don't make no difference if you're 79, 59. It don't make no difference. You put on your breath the whole armor I got and take care of that individual. Just don't kill him. Leave him breathing. But not any unable to walk. We are in, in a world where violence comes to you quickly. You must not always depend on the police. Because oftentimes, by the time the police show up, America, everything has been done. And if you behave like the wicked, you will be killed. But if you behave like you are among the sons and daughters of God, you will not be harmed. But your victim, your robber, your thief, whoever broke into your house and came in through the window, that individual should see you as their worst nightmare. So stop always depending on the police to come and rescue you. Stop it. Do you hear me, America? Stop it. Stop screaming. Your body is a magnificent piece of flesh. God made it special. Okay? He made it where he prepared your body for anything. Your body will prepare you for anything. It will give you a lethal dose of adrenaline. Okay? If you have to take flight, you will be able to fa run faster than you could without the adrenaline. If you have to fight, your body will prepare you for that fight. With the favor of God upon that, you are a winner. You understand? So stop acting like the wicked and act more like the righteous men and women that you are. And these people need to know that there are two houses you can break in. You can break in an evil person, an atheist who will run from you and do whatever you say, or you can break into a house of a righteous person and get your behind kicked. Because that's exactly what I would do if someone breaks into my home and call the police thereafter. I'm tired of seeing my sisters and brothers hurt because they don't know what to do. You cannot depend on someone else to save your hide. You can depend on Jesus all the time. He's always on time. He already knows what's going on in your house. And he will give you whatever it is that you need to overpower your enemy. Do you understand, America? Stop that screaming. And protect what's yours. Your children. Your grandchildren. Protect them at all causes, through any means necessary. You've heard that before in history. I'm tired of this. All right? If somebody threatens you, you go to the police and let them know. That this person, you give them a name. 
Okay? Don't be sitting there taking all this abuse and then suddenly you 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 do something terrible and the first thing the police is going to say to you, well, you never complain. We don't have no record of uh, domestic abuse. You must think wisely, sisters. I'm tired of seeing my sisters being buried. I'm tired of seeing my brothers, good men, being buried. These are good men. They may take a woman, take care of her children, put her in a house, and what do they do? They put the man in a coffin. Don't be hard-necked. If a family member or a friend says to you, man, brother, you need to leave this alone, or if your parents say to you, son, pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention. Don't be looking at the flesh all the time because everything that looks good on the outside is got a rotten heart inside. You, I, 95% of beautiful women have rotten hearts on, in the inside. 95% of them. So watch what you're looking for when you're looking for a spouse, whether it be a man looking for a woman or a woman looking for a man. Pay attention in the beginning, and you won't be sorry. All right? My name is Brenda Guerrero. I hope you got something out of this. And I thought this last tail end of this teaching was extremely important because I am tired of seeing my brothers and sisters subjected to these monstrous individuals. And somebody's got to say what needs to be said. I hope you got something out of it. As always, please read your Bible. Spend a little time with the Lord. So when the devil comes near you, the Lord will help you out. Trust me. He will help you out. You put on this best place of righteousness, and, you, hey, and you'll be all right. I promise. You will be all right if you do things right. And if God is in your corner, you're definitely going to be all right. My name is Brenda Guerrero. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful uh, Saturday, and don't forget to rest. Until the next time.